Hi, this is Robert, one half of the 12 Pound Podcast. Welcome to our latest 12 by 20 episode. As a quick reminder, our show discusses life's changes and how we hope to help you face them through shared stories and experiences. So today's episode is being recorded, as we had mentioned just a few minutes ago off camera, is being recorded at Kona Sports in Wildwood, New Jersey. And we are thrilled to welcome our guest, Sean Thompson. Hi, Sean. How are you? Good. It's great to be here, especially looking out on a surf shop with boards uh, displayed. <laughs> It is. Yeah, we, we we didn't hang them up just for this episode. They were here prior to the recording, but we were very happy to uh, yeah, to be here in Kona. And it's so nice that you have some ties, even if they're from a few years back to Wildwood, New Jersey. It's an important place for our listeners and some of the locals here. And it's nice to know that someone uh, who's been surfing as long as you have and has successfully knows our, our little island. Yes, I know. Uh, I know New Jersey well. And in fact, uh, my wife and I had a clothing brand called Solitude, which used to be sold uh, at the store Kona, so, uh, and right the way across uh, uh, in New Jersey, all sorts of stores. In fact, I was in uh, New Jersey in uh, Point Pleasant about uh, a month and a half ago, uh, involved with the launch of my new book, The Surfer and the Sage, at one of the surf shops they call the Ocean Hut. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy you, you've been here recently. I'm just going to give a quick background on you. I think a lot of listeners who are tuning in today are very familiar with you and your your history in surfing, uh, but a lot's happened since you've left the sport. I know you're still tied to it in many ways, uh, but I, I just found it fascinating the changes that you've been through in your career over the last several years, and and how you've really made this incredibly successful business for yourself over and over again. So Sean is a former world surfing champion. Sean was named one of the ten greatest surfers of all time. He has a bachelor's in business administration and a master's of science and leadership from Northeastern University. Sean has created two popular apparel brands. One he had mentioned, Solitude, and the other is Instinct, which he co-founded with his wife, Carla. So he's the author of the best-selling book, Surfer's Code and the Code, The Power of I Will, available on Amazon. Today, Sean is traveling the world, sharing his academically tested code leadership method from corporate boardrooms to university classrooms, as well as rural schools in his home country of South Africa. Thank you so much for being here, Sean. We really appreciate it. Great, Robert. It's wonderful uh, to be on. And I'm hoping that uh, your listeners enjoy my perspective and also um, this little method that uh, we're going to be talking about that has certainly helped many people. And uh, it's really simple. It's uh, transformational. And uh, it's called The Code, and it's open source code, so it can be used by anyone in any way, shape, or form. It's free. So tell us about what was the genesis of The Code? When did it start for you? The code started about uh, close to 20 years ago. Um, it started uh, as a result of an environmental problem at a local beach here where I surf called Rincon. It's a very famous surfing beach. And a friend of mine asked me to uh, give something to a group of kids that he was bringing down to the beach, along with media and uh, local water board and government officials to solve the problem. And he wanted me to to um, really activate environmental consciousness amongst the, the young boys and girls that were coming down and consequently the media would pick up on it and then we'd eventually be able to create enough awareness of the problem that we could solve it. So um, he said, Sean, you've got a hundred dollar budget. You know, he's a, he's a very big, uh, big budget guy. And I went home that night and thought like, how can I empower about a hundred kids with a hundred dollar budget? So I wrote a little card. You know, the number 12, obviously, it, it, it has significance uh, to you guys. And uh, I wrote the fundamental lessons that surfing had taught me about life, every line beginning with I will. And it just came out at 12. I mean, I, I didn't aim it to come out at 12, but I will always paddle back out. I will never turn my back on the ocean. I will realize that all surfers are joined by one ocean. Just simple concepts uh, about uh, character and about purpose. It turned into a groundswell. I started printing more and more of the cards. And my wife and I had a apparel business, Solitude at the time. And we started putting the, the little code cards into the pockets of our shirts and our board shorts. And you know, thousands and thousands of these cards were getting distributed out in the culture. We were making lots of clothes. So many, many thousands of these cards were getting out there. And ultimately, it ended up uh, in, in, in a book. And then it ended up in another book. and ended up in the third book. So um, it sort of really helped me go down a different path in my life, these simple 12 lines, every line beginning with I will. We want to thank our sponsor, Rich Asset Management. 
But before we do, we need to read you a quick disclosure. A security is offered through Kestra Investment Services, LLC, member FINRA. Investment advisory services offered through Kestra Advisory Services, an affiliate of Kestra IS. Kestra IS and Kestra AS are not affiliated with Rich Asset Management or any other entities mentioned herein. To view form CRS, please visit www.kestrafinancial.com backslash disclosures. Rich Asset Management based in Marmora, New Jersey is a premier financial services firm dedicated to helping clients reach an enjoyable retirement. Dedicated to educating Cape May and Atlantic County, Rich Asset Management is committed to providing leading edge financial advice supported by a first class client service experience. Rich Asset Management chooses to be independent so their clients know their advice is always in their best interest and directly tied to their goals. Make it sound so easy, writing three books. I mean, I'm sure it was challenging. What was that like the first time someone either approached you or you thought about putting down your thoughts to share? Yeah, it was really a different. And, um, you know, it's interesting. You might read a lot of uh, sort of self-help and personal development books and a lot of them focus on, you know, just say no. You know, there's so much coming at you, you need to be selective and say no. I'm of the opposite um, philosophy. I think you need to say yes. And you need to connect as much as you can with as many people as you can. Because you never know what can happen with a random connection. Um, I spoke at a, a, a conference. It was called the Groundswell Society. And I spoke about my little code. And a guy came up to me and said, hey, Sean. Uh, he said, I think this would make a terrific book. Uh, I said, well, I've never written a book. He said, well, I haven't written a book either, but I'm a professor of French literature. Why don't we collaborate? And we did. And it would have been so easy to say no, but I collaborated and it turned into my first book, Surface Code, which became a bestseller. And, and then I lost my beautiful, uh, my wife and I lost our beautiful son, uh, Matthew, when the book was with the publisher. But eventually, you know, I thought, no, I've got to release this book. Um, and I released a book and it became popular and then people started to phone me up and ask me to talk at all sorts of events around the world, very large leadership events. I mean, I'd speak with Malcolm Gladwell and Richard Branson and, you know, they'd be talking about their terrific success with books and terrific success with entrepreneurial endeavors. And I'd be talking about a code, about values, which really seemed to strike a chord with people. And, and then one day I was sitting in the lineup at Rincon, which is the break where the environmental problem occurred that it was really the genesis for surface code. Uh, and a, a guy paddled up to me and said, Sean, I'm a headmaster at a local school. I'd love you to talk to our kids about the code. And I went down to the school and chatted to the kids. And when I was talking to them, I said, you know, surface code was my code. I wrote it in 15, 20 minutes, 12 lines. Every line begins with our, a well, 105 words. What about your code? Why don't all of you write down your codes? 12 lines. Spend no more than 20 minutes on it. And I got back these amazing lines of code. It was just a spur of the moment uh, connection with these, with these young students. And the very first line was, I will be myself. Um, and, you know, we lost uh, Matthew a number of months before. And, and those, that, that line that, that, that first young girl sent me was just amazingly, I think, inspiring. It was very, very powerful. Um, and it was like a statement, like she put a flag in the sand and said she wasn't going to be pushed around, she wasn't going to be victimized, she wasn't going to be bullied. So I immediately found out Patrick and I said, hey, Patrick, we've got to do another book. And uh, this book is going to be a framework for positive decision-making amongst kids. And, and it was called The Code, The Power of I Will. So, and every chapter title was written by a student. I will pray, I'll have faith. And, and then we, 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 we built... Uh, stories from my uh, surfing experiences uh, around those 12 chapters. And then the book came out and, and it became popular. And then you know, I started speaking to hundreds of thousands of students at, and, and the best universities in the world. And then also the best companies in the world, you know, Google, Cisco. I mean, uh, so many massive GM, uh, Disney Gap. I mean, just I speak to massive companies about how to find purpose. A couple of years ago, a friend introduced me to another friend at lunch. She said, I thought you guys would, 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 you know, would like each other. And uh, this guy was a, a Pulitzer-nominated philosopher and poet. And we started chatting. And in five minutes, we had a nice connection. His name is Noah Ben Shane. He said, hey, Sean, let's write a book together. So I went, okay. 
we'll call it the surf and the sage. And he said, a guide to surviving around life's waves. So that's what can happen. Another book came out. Uh, I launched on the Today Show. It went to number one on Amazon in its genre. And it all has come from two things. One is saying yes, and two saying I will. How simple is that? <laughs> it really is. That's amazing. Uh, it's, it is interesting. If just, you know, that ability to say yes and to kind of uh, not to oversimplify, but kind of go with the flow. And, you know, when you're in a conversation, being able to, you know, to take it somewhere where you may not have expected, but you, you know, you, you, you go with it nonetheless. Well, let me start by saying I'm terribly sorry for the loss of your son. I appreciate you sharing that with us and our audience. I'm, I'm sure that was very difficult. Um, and I, I, I'm sure it, uh, devastating. And it, I'm sure since then, maybe in some ways, though it sounds strange, inspiring, because you've, you've done so much by creating this content that people can, can look to, particularly those people who are looking for a will to go forward and think about next steps. And if you think about your own career, and tell me if I read this correctly, that uh, your first trip to Hawaii as a surfer was a bar mitzvah gift. Is that true? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's unbelievable. So I was thinking how something like that, and I think it was from your father, yeah. uh, if, I, if I also read that correctly, that something that came from your parents then translated into this career for you. And then since then, you've had these other career iterations. Yeah, I think my parents were incredibly supportive uh, of all their, their, their three children, my mom, mom and dad. I mean, they, they, they got divorced when they were, when I was around about 10 years old. But, you know, I never heard my mom say anything bad about my dad, and I never heard my dad say anything bad about, about my mom. Uh, so we were just, um, you know, we were surrounded with love, I think. We were never allowed to fight. In fact, my mom used to say, there is no fighting with your brother and sister allowed in this house. She would say, this is how wars are started. And she lived through the Second World War. She lived through um, the bombing of the island of Malta, where she lived during the Second World War, which was a strategic seaport in the Mediterranean, was the most heavily bombed place in the history of the world. Even to this day, she injured 3,600 air raids. You know, for four years, they lived in, in underground shelters. So um, she had this, uh, she was a very prayerful woman too. You know, she loved to pray. She, she was way more spiritual than she was uh, religious. I think even though the, the, the she was religious. So, um, you know, there was this sort of beautiful softness and this importance of, of relationships between a brother and sister, mom and dad, uh, you know, father and son. My dad loved sport. He loved me to succeed. Um, but he, he was never overbearing. Um, and, I, and I think it's a wonderful lesson for all parents is not to be there to direct traffic, not to be there to direct career, but just to be there as a supporter, to be there uh, for your children with advice, but not judgment um, and not prescription. So uh, when I was in the water and I knew my dad was watching me competing, when I came in, he would never tell me, well, you should have done this or you should have done that. Or he would not never be on the beach with a flag or, or towel telling me which way to go. It was my responsibility. So both of them gave us a lot of responsibility, but they had, uh, uh, you know, they trusted, they, 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 they trusted all of us. So, I think with that responsibility and trust came the sort of measure of, um, well, you know, you, you should be, uh, you should always try to be your best and try to be at your best. You know, my father had been a great athlete in his youth. He was actually, you know, wanting to go to the Olympics to win a gold medal in swimming. And, and at a young age, when he was 22 years old, he was very badly attacked by a shark. He was nearly killed, but he was never, and which destroyed his career. But he never, ever lost his love for the ocean, and he was never bitter about his loss. And he loved me to succeed. Yes, he loved me to succeed because he could participate in that. But I never felt like I was doing it because it was his dream. What seems like your parents instilled those fundamental character traits in you at a young age. As you go out, and now you're, you're as a public speaker, whether you're speaking to one of these corporations or a university, 
How do you find it's received? I mean, character is an interesting quality. If you are looking at a company or a person who is of high character, it seems like they have a higher return on investment. There's more that they can deliver as a result. So how has that teaching process been and how has it been received as you've been speaking to these large groups of, 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 of people? So when I, when I, I, I talk, um, I try to do two things. One is, is give a perspective on my life um, and give a perspective on my character. But it's not a prescription. All it is is a perspective. You know, I'll, I'll tell a story about commitment and I'll tell a story about connectivity um, and perseverance and resilience. You know, I, I just want to show the important traits that have helped me uh, in my life. Not only be successful in, in, in surfing and business, but also you know, have helped me endure heartbreak and grief um, and loss and, and, and be a better person. And then um, I show the code method. So the code method is just a simple tool to activate purpose. Purpose is a long-term commitment to accomplish aims that are meaningful to yourself and to the broader world. So purpose is like the power to find so that you can be committed long-term to meaningful endeavors, not just visualization, but introspection, and then creating a concrete path by writing your code, 12 lines, every line beginning with our will, is a wonderful way to activate the impetus and power to realize those commitments. And then if you couple that, which is, this is a super cool path, if you couple that with a public statement, so people state, state their commitments, their 12 lines. And what this does, it creates this feeling of connectivity, plus it creates this feeling of vulnerability, which in this context is incredibly important because this is not about competition. This is about engagement and connecting with a fellow human being at a deeply spiritual level. I like to say when people write their 12 lines, they write in a different language. They write in spirit language. Because when people write their 12 lines, everyone writes the best version of who they want to be. They don't write, I will hit my third quarter goals. They don't write, I will be financially successful. People aspire towards noble pursuits. I'll have faith. I'll pray. I'll lift others up when they're down. I'll be a mentor. I'll be a lifelong learner. You know, people write, I will be a better spouse. I'll be a better husband. I'll be a better father. That's, that's a very, I will be a better father and I will be a better spouse are very, very popular. And, and when everyone reads everyone else's, people realize that we're very, very similar. We're way more similar than this perception of living in a divided world. And yes, there's this chasm between Republicans and Democrats. But when people write their code, they're not Republicans and they're not Democrats. They're just part of this collective humanity. When I read, you know, and I, and, and I see people's codes, I like to think I've got the best job in the world because I'm seeing the absolute beauty, the true beauty of the human spirit. Everyone writes different lives, but we only write two lives. And the meaning, the true meaning of our lives can be illustrated by two lines of code. I will be better. I'll help others be better. That's what people write. And that is, that's like the purpose of life. We want to be better. We want to help others be better. That's it. That's how simple it is. Thank you for sharing all that. And thank you for sharing your stories. This was uh, one of uh, my favorite 12 by 20s. So thank you for spending the time today. Uh, it's been a pleasure, Sean. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. We hope to see you down in Southern New Jersey in the Philadelphia area before too long. <laughs> and before we do, if you uh, like what you hear, please check out Sean's website at www.seanthompson.com. You can find this episode and other episodes of the 12 Pound Podcast at www.12poundpodcast.com. So Sean, thank you again. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you for making the time. And I wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much, Robert. And hi to you all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And she will love that.